Hello students, in this lecture we will study about classification of signals that is what are the different types into which the signals are classified. Coming to that first classification is periodic and aperiodic signals. Second classification is even and odd signals. Third classification is deterministic and random signals. Fourth classification is causal and non-causal signals. And the last classification is energy and power signals. So let us study one by one. First is periodic and aperiodic signals. And you all know about this but let me write some points for a signal to be periodic it should exist from minus infinity to infinite that is it should exist for all time duration then only it is said to be periodic after this if x of t plus t is equal to x of t or x of n plus n is equal to x of n this should be in square bracket then t and n is called as fundamental time period is called as fundamental time period that is the signal will repeat continuously after time period t similarly the signal will repeat continuously after time period n if you observe in the signal the time period of the signal is 2 why because it is repeating continuously after t equal to 2 and this also exists from minus infinity to infinity so from this time period is 2 and this is fundamental time period why because if a signal is periodic with t equal to 2 then I can tell that this is also periodic with t equal to 4 and this is also periodic with t equal to 6 that's why I am giving the name here this is fundamental time period next find the time period of following signal if you observe here the mistake many people will do is they will directly write time period as 2 pi but this is a aperiodic signal why because the signal only exists for positive time but the first property of periodic signals is it should exist for all time duration So this is an aperiodic signal. Next, find the time period of following signals. If there is a signal sign omega t, then time period of the signal will be 2 pi by omega. Is this okay? So time period of the signal will be 2 pi by 1, that is 2 pi. Similarly, time period of this signal will be 2 pi by pi that is 2 next here a DC signal is added to the sign signal I will write a note point here addition or subtraction of DC signal to a periodic signal will not affect its periodicity will not affect its periodicity that is time period for pi t and period for 4 plus sin pi t will be same 
so what will be that i am writing this here fundamental time period equal to 2 pi by pi that is 2 for both the signals next find the period of following signals if you observe here signal is e power minus phi t if i plot this signal this will be like this so this is not repeating that's why the signal is not periodic or i can tell that it is a periodic signal next find the period of e power minus j phi pi t this is a complex exponential if complex exponential is given that is e power j theta equal to sin theta plus j cos theta sin theta is periodic and cos theta will also be periodic so that complex exponential is a periodic function periodic function while normal exponential is not periodic that is this will be a periodic signal and complex exponential will be periodic so if an exponential function e power j omega t is given time period will be 2 pi by omega is this okay in the equation it is mentioned e power minus j phi t i will let plus or minus here e power minus j phi t so here time period will be 2 pi by phi that's it next x of t equal to e power minus j phi pi t into u of t this complex exponential is periodic but here we are multiplying with the signal u of t that indicates that the whole signal x of t will only exist for positive duration why because we are multiplying with u of t that's why our first property fails first property fails that is signal should exist from minus infinity to infinite so this is an apoptotic signal next now how to find time period of a discrete signal here what will happen is time period will be 2 pi by omega same as this so this will be 2 pi by 5 pi by 3 6 pi 5 here you need to observe a thing that is i will write this here time period will be an integer it cannot be a fraction why because discrete signals only exist for n equal to 0 1 2 3 in this manner time period also will be an integer so the process is up to here the process remains same for continuous and discrete signals from here what we should do is we should reduce into should reduce into least possible fraction least possible fraction that is if answer is 15 by 10 i should reduce this to 3 by 2 and after reducing my numerator will be time period time period will be numerator itself is this okay so here it is already in simplest fraction so my time period will be 6 that is n equal to 6 and here i will write this as like this because just to differentiate between continuous and discrete that is time period will be 2 pi by omega 
नेक्स्ट हियर टी विल बी टू पाई बै फाइव बै थ्री विच इज सिक्स पाई बै फाइव दिस इज एंडल नंबर सो फॉर डिस्क्रीट सिग्नल दिस कैंड ऑफ टाइम पीरियड कैनाट एक्सिस्ट दैट वै दिस इज एंड सिग्नल नेक्स्ट एक्स ऑफ एन ईक्वल टू इ पवर सिक्स पाई एन बै फाइव सो टाइम पीरियड विल बी दट इज इफ ए सिग्नल इज इ पवर जे ओमेगा एन टाइम पीरियड विल बी टू पाई बै ओमेगा सेम एस कंटिन्यूअस सो हियर आई कैन रईट टाइम पीरियड एस टू पाई बै सिक्स पाई बै फाइव फ्रम दिस दिस विल बी टेन बै सिक्स ऐ शुड रेड्यूस इन टू लीस्ट पॉसिबल फ्लैक्शन टू थ्री जै सिक्स टू फाइव जै टेन फाइव बै थ्री एंड द टाइम पीरियड विल बी न्यूमरेटर इट सेल्फ फाइव सो टाइम पीरियड इज फाइव दिस इज द मेथड टू फाइंड टाइम पीरियड ऑफ डिस्क्रीट सिग्नल्स नेक्स्ट हाउ टू फाइंड द टाइम पीरियड इफ मल्टीपल सिग्नल्स आर गिवन दैट इज द सिग्नल इज पीरियोडिक एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो पीरियोडिक हाउ टू फाइंड द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ दिस टू सिग्नल्स फर्स्ट मेथड इज टेक एल सी एम ऑफ टी वन एंड टी टू एंड देर इज अनदर मेथड विच इज शॉर्टकट इन दिस फर्स्ट यू शुड फाइंड टी वन सो टी वन विल बी टू पाई बाई एटीन पाई That is one by nine, and you should find t two. That is two pi by twelve pi. One by six, and after you should divide this two. That is t one by t two. One by nine by one by six. Three two ja three three so. Answer will be two by three. So t one by t two is equal to two by three. Now cross multiply this. From this, three t one will be equal to two t two, and this will be our time period, either three t one or two t two. That is three into one by nine. Time period will be one by three, and two t two will also give the same answer. That is two into one by six, one by three. So here time period is one by three. an important thing is t1 by t2 should be a rational number remember this if t1 by t2 is irrational then this is an aperiodic signal next in this question we will follow the same procedure t1 will be 2 pi by 3 t2 will be 2 pi by 5 pi Next, t1 by t2 will be 2 pi by 3 by 2 by 5. That is 5 pi by 3. Here, t1 by t2 is an irrational number. So this is an aperiodic signal. If you observe in this signal, cos 3t is periodic. With time period two pi by three, sine phi t is periodic with time period two by five, but combination of these two signals is an aperiodic signal. So do remember this. Next, if three functions are given at a time, how to find the time period? So first method is take LCM of three time periods. That is t one, t two, t three. And second method is find t one. It will be two pi by pi by four. This will be eight. Find t two. This will be two pi by pi by eight. So answer will be sixteen. After this, find t three. Two pi by Pi by two. That is four. After finding t one, t two, and t three, what you will do is 
do t1 by t2 and divide t1 by t3 the same time period you should divide with other two different time periods if i divide t1 by t2 8 by 16 answer will be 1 by 2 if i divide t1 by t3 8 by 4 answer will be 2 by 1 and next step is cross multiply these two signals as earlier so from here 2 t1 will be t2 and from here t1 will be 2 t3 now write these two separately 2 t1 and t1 my time period will be lcm of these two that is 2 into t1 if our answer is a t1 and b t1 my time period will be lcm of a and b into t1 so lcm of 1 and 2 will be 2 the time period is 2 t1 2 into t1 will be 8 so the time period will be 16 or you can directly take lcm of three signals that is lcm of 8 16 and 4 that is 16 but if the time periods are in fractions the second method will become handy if the time periods are integers then first method will become handy so do practice these two methods let us understand what are bounded and unbounded signals for a signal to be bounded or unbounded we should check the amplitude if maximum amplitude is finite then this is called as bounded signal if maximum amplitude is infinite then this is called as unbounded signal infinite then this is called as unbounded signal this is bounded signal if you observe these two signals in first signal maximum amplitude is going towards infinity so this is an unbounded signal in the second signal maximum amplitude is finite this is the maximum amplitude so this is bounded signal very simple which of the following signals are bounded x of t equal to sin t for a signal sin t maximum amplitude will be 1 the signal cannot go beyond 1 or minus 1 that's why this is a bounded signal but for tan t the signal goes to infinite that's why this is an unbounded signal next which of the following signals are bounded these are the graphs of e power 2t and these are the graphs of e power minus 2t so in the first case if i multiply the signal with u of minus t my result will be like this right so my maximum amplitude is finite this is a bounded signal next in the second case if i multiply with u of t my signal will be like this so here my maximum amplitude is going towards infinity so this is an unbounded signal in third problem if i multiply this with u of minus t the answer will be like this so here also my maximum amplitude is going towards infinity so this is also unbounded signal in fourth problem if i multiply with u of t the answer will be like this here my maximum amplitude is finite so this is a bounded signal this is a way to determine which are bounded and which are unbounded signals next classification is causal and non-causal a signal is said to be causal if it exists for t greater than 0 the signal x of t exists for t greater than 0 that's why this is a causal signal and if a signal exists for t less than 0 this is called as anti-causal that is this signal x of t only exists for t less than 0 that's why this is called as anti-causal signal and if the signal exists for both the cycles 
that is for both t greater than 0 and t less than 0 then the signal is called as non causal signal here the signal x of t exists for both t greater than 0 and for t less than 0 so this is called as non causal signal next classification is even and odd signals a signal is said to be even if x of t is equal to x of minus t and a signal is said to be odd if x of t is equal to minus x of minus t now if you observe this signal if you want to plot x of minus t the signal will remain as it is so i can tell that if a signal is symmetric about the y axis then it is said to be an even signal so what is the property here for even signals it should be symmetric about y axis next coming to this signal this is signum t so let us find signum of minus t this will be like this which is equal to minus signum of t signum of minus t will be minus signum of t this is an odd function if you observe in the graph this function is symmetric about y equal to x so for a function to be odd it should be symmetric about y equal to x is this okay many of you are familiar with all these properties but just take it as a revision next a signal can be either even odd or it can be neither even nor odd a signal which are not both can be expressed as sum of even signal and odd signal is this okay from this x even will be x of t plus x of minus t by 2 and odd part will be x of t minus x of minus t by 2 so in the question what he will mention is he will give a signal x of t and he will ask us to find the even and odd parts of signal so we know that x of t can be expressed as x even of t plus odd part of t and by using these two formulae you can find these two parts find even and odd parts of u of t so here signal x of t is given as u of t first i need to find the even part x even of t what is the formula x of t plus x of minus t by 2 that is u of t plus u of minus t by 2 u of t plus u of minus t is nothing but 1 1 by 2 so x even of t will be 1 by 2 next i need to find the odd part that is x of t minus x of minus t by 2 which is equal to u of t minus u of minus t by 2 u of t minus u of minus t is nothing but signum function so this is signum t by 2 so odd part will be signum t by 2 now we know that a function can be expressed in terms of even part and odd part so from these two results i can write u of t as 1 by 2 plus signum t by 2 is this okay 
now what we are talking is even and odd words these are for real signals but for complex signals these are converted into conjugate symmetry and anti symmetry conjugate symmetry and conjugate anti symmetry let us look into this a signal is said to be conjugate symmetric if x of t is equal to x conjugate of minus t and a signal is said to be conjugate anti symmetric if x of t is equal to minus x conjugate of minus t is this okay and any complex signal any complex signal can be expressed as sum of conjugate symmetric and anti symmetric part that is x of t can be expressed as conjugate symmetric part plus conjugate anti symmetric part where conjugate symmetric part is given by the formula x of t plus x conjugate of minus t by 2 and we can get conjugate anti symmetric part by the formula x of t minus x conjugate of minus t by 2 is this okay everything is similar to even and odd signals but the only difference is conjugate because this is a complex function that's why we are using conjugate in this question he is asking us to find conjugate anti symmetric part of this discrete signal so for finding the anti symmetric part this is a discrete signal the formula is x of n minus x conjugate of minus n by 2 so first let us find x conjugate of minus n for that i am finding x of minus n first here this arrow indicates n equal to 0 so this will become minus 1 this will be 1 now x of minus n will be j phi 0 sorry this is 2 and 1 plus j2 the samples will be interchanged after this i need to find x conjugate of minus n that is wherever there is j term change the sign in front of it so this will become minus j phi this will be 2 this will be 1 minus j2 arrow mark is here after this i should subtract these two signals that is x of n minus x conjugate of minus n 1 plus j2 2 j phi if i subtract x conjugate of minus n from x of n the result will be 1 plus j2 minus of minus j phi here this will be 2 minus 2 here this will be j phi minus 1 minus j2 so this is 1 plus j7 this will be 0 and here this will be minus 1 plus j7 and at the end we should divide this signal by 2 so my conjugate anti symmetric part will be 1 plus j7 by 2 0 and minus 1 plus j7 by 2 this is the answer now find conjugate symmetric part by using this formula take this as a homework after this deterministic and random signal 
A signal is said to be deterministic if we can determine the future values of signal. That is, if there is a signal x of t equal to sin t. For all t, I can determine what is the value of the signal. So, this kind of signals are called as deterministic signals. Next, random signals are those whose values cannot be determined. For example, there is a speech signal. I am talking with you. You cannot determine what I will be speaking next. This kind of signals are called as random signals. Example is speech signal. This is for now and there is one classification remaining that is energy and power signals. In the next lecture we will look into this.